Welcome everyone to a very special A Night for Nature. I'm Jason Sanders and it's been my privilege to serve as Executive Director of Dodge Nature Center and Preschool for the past 10 years. Unique circumstances this year created an opportunity for us to reach many more with this event. Registered viewers from 15 states, even Canada and Australia. Hi Tom. So excited to be sharing this evening with all of you as we make the biggest announcement in Dodge Nature Center history later in the program. But first, some housekeeping. Turn up that sound. All right, I want you to be able to hear me. Click on the full screen button because I don't want you to miss anything. And thank you to our sponsors who generous support allowed this event to be free for everyone. Thank you to Morris Code for providing studio space we, where we are live tonight. No seven second delays, we are live people. Thank you to Andy Burnt and the Community Blueprint for all that they have done to make these videos possible. The drone footage, remarkable. I'm gonna keep things moving tonight and I hope you'll stick with me till the end. Even though we couldn't be together in person this year, I want this to be as live as, as an event as possible, to be interactive as possible. When you RSVP'd, you received a cocktail recipe as well as some coloring sheets for the kids. There will be a special opportunity to donate to Dodge later in the evening. But if you're inspired to give right now, exit that full screen mode and click on the button below at any time and thank you. Did you notice this beautiful piece of alphabet art next to me? It was created by our talented naturalist fellow, Ashley Johnson, who you'll meet later in the show. Keep an eye on this easel. The letter will change throughout the night. Total of six letters, six. Write down every letter you see and unscramble the word to spell the word. Fill out the form below this video in the next 24 hours for your chance to win one of these prize packs. Beautiful flowers to my left and right and this prize pack here. People will be bringing home all of these native flowers and grasses. I'm also so grateful for our event chairs, Lit and Ann Field. This is not the night for nature they were expecting when they agreed to chair this, but they are excited to share this moment with you. They recorded a special message to welcome you to the event. Take a look. Hello everyone and welcome to the Thomas Irvin Dodge Nature Center, A Night for Nature. We are so honored to be the event chairs this year. The event certainly looks different this year as we stay at home and keep each other safe. But as Dodge has stepped up for the community during these times, we have so much to celebrate. A Night for Nature highlights Dodge's importance to environmental education and throughout social distancing requirements. Dodge has been a tangible source of good, serving the community, keeping trails open, creating new content for children and adults, and adjusting programming to continue to nourish your need for nature. Normally, a night for nature is a time where we gather to hear about the latest ways Dodge is leading nature-based education, and tonight is no different. Throughout the evening, you will hear about how Dodge has responded to the events of 2020, and how they continue to innovate and impact the community, and how your support can ensure Dodge continues to lead for generations to come. Anna and I are proud to have been Dodge supporters for decades and decades. I was first exposed to Dodge in the 1980s, coming out to see Olivia with my parents. Since then, I joined the board in 1999 and was privileged to be the board chair in 2009 and 2010. I can recall back in the early 2000s, walking the grounds with Olivia as she envisioned a preschool for environmental education. Since then, Dodge has improved and changed and expanded. We placed a conservation easement on the Lilly property and most recently acquired the Connie Otis Farm in Cottage Grove with plenty of environmental education to come. My Dodge education includes Farmer Don teaching me how to catch chickens which I believe entitles me to own chickens. Right, honey? Chickens? I don't think so. I think we're going to have chickens. Tonight, chickens or not. <laughs> oh, no. 
Wouldn't you agree? I don't think we'll have any chickens. But We're tonight having chickens. we renew our support and ask that you join us. It is because of the generosity of donors like you that Dodge continues to impact the community. And while we don't have a goat kissing booth or chicken bingo tonight, we still wanted to create an interactive and fun atmosphere th for the evening. When you RSVP'd for the event, you should have received a recipe card for a fun Dodge cocktail or mocktail. At this time, we'd like to turn the festivities over to Dodge Nature Center Director of Environmental Education, Pete Cleary, for a masterclass in nature-based cocktails. Take it away, Pete. Good evening and welcome to Dodge Nature Center. My name is Pete Cleary, I'm the Environmental Education Director here at Dodge, and we're at the Sugar House tonight to make the signature cocktail for tonight's Night for Nature. Signature cocktail being our Dodge Old Fashioned. So the ingredients for tonight's cocktail are Dodge Nature Center maple syrup. If you need to get some Dodge Nature Center maple syrup, you're gonna have to wait till next March, and you can come by our main office to try to purchase some. If you don't have it, any other syrup will do, except for don't use log cabin. Uh, Canadian whiskey, any, any of your favorite whiskeys will do. Need a couple dashes of bitters, a little bit of club soda, and some frozen raspberries to garnish. So let's get started making this cocktail. Let's add in some ice. Then add in your whiskey, one shot, as generous as you prefer. Spoonful of maple syrup. Two dashes of bitters. And club soda to fill the glass. And frozen raspberries to garnish. And there you have the Dodge Maple Old Fashioned. Oh, lit. You are getting chickens, no doubt in my mind. Chickens are coming to the household. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks, Pete. If you missed it, you can make the mocktail by replacing the whiskey and 7-Up with club soda. When Pete isn't making cocktails, he spends his time do at Dodge leading our outstanding team of naturalists. This year, every aspect of what we do as an organization was tested because of the pandemic. Nature programs, camps, the preschool, farm, volunteers, everything. Our resilient staff and their creativity and humor continue to help us get through these times together. And it's your gifts to the annual fund that support Dodge's daily operations. Your generosity means Dodge has the tools to respond creatively to the needs of our community, even as they change so dramatically this year. People are the heart and soul of Dodge Nature Center. You can see this. And since you won't have a chance to see staff at Night for Nature this year, I recently sat down with some of them to discuss how they've adapted to this year's events. First up, the preschool. If you aren't aware, Dodge Nature Preschool is our place for early childhood environmental learning. At Dodge, children develop a lifelong connection to nature while exploring the Nature Center's 100 and 10 acres. Everything from the farm to ponds, prairies, woodlands, every season, all weather. Christenza Nelson, a lead teacher at Dodge Nature Preschool, shared some ways the preschool program has adapted this year, both as the pandemic was beginning and as the new school year starts. Uh, my name is Christenza Nelson and I am a teacher at the preschool. When the state of Minnesota closed down schools mid-March, uh, that meant three, four, and five-year-olds at Dodge Nature Preschool also were heading home. Yes, it did. How did that affect you and the, and the preschool teachers? Well, we were actually right here on the very last day of school. Um, we were tapping maple trees, and our numbers started to drop off in the class, and I think I had three or four children on the very last day. And um, it almost, it was so sudden, it felt really um, almost like we were in a ghost town when we came back to the school. You know, little Ellie's sweatshirt was still hanging in her cubby and we had walked away and, you know, just really shut things down. And it was, it was really sad. 
As, as we get by conferences, past conferences, you know, Dodge has decided and, and teachers said, hey, let's continue on with some online education here and distance learning. What did that look like and what were some of the challenges preschool teachers had? Well, I think particularly for preschool teachers, we're working with three, four, and five-year-olds. So we sort of felt like um, what distance learning was such a far cry from being together on the trail. We also um, follow uh, emergent curriculum and we follow the four seasons as our curriculum. So all of a sudden to be, you know, isolated in a way that our only form of communication was through a screen with a very young child, it was incredibly challenging. So we, so we really worked hard to figure out how to pull them back into the conversation, back into the classroom to be a part of the dialogue. and. Um, I was so happy to see their faces and more than anything they just wanted to see each other and laugh and make faces and share a toy, show you their bedroom. You know they just really were excited to see each other. Now fast forward mm -hmm. to July, July 6th in fact, where we welcome children back to the preschool. Um, very small number of children that we're used to. Right. But to, to be the best that we can be, we wanted to open those doors up so they could participate at Dodge. What did that mean to you that first day as the children drove up? The first day, I really wondered how things were gonna go. We have a different um, uh, method um, following guidelines to open and operate safely. And I didn't know um, again, how that would affect children's social and emotional well-being. I can't tell you how delightful it is to see children back on the trails and um, it's the first day was just figuring out how things were just going to be a little different and they are so happy to be back and so happy to be with other children and we do little reminders like eagle arms so you have a little space but what a gift to be outside. We know that's one of the safest places to be and the safest ways to be together. And I think it's the best medicine for kids and for this situation. Thank you, Christenza, and to every creative, innovative teacher at Dodge Nature Preschool. This year, we'll celebrate our 20th anniversary at the preschool, one of the very first nature preschools in the United States, a model for other programs across the country. Maybe you know this firsthand because your child attended Dodge Nature Preschool. I'm a preschool alumni parent too. Or maybe you have students there this fall in outdoor classrooms, learning in the fresh air and beauty of Dodge. Whether your child was there 20 years ago or they were climbing Challenge Hill this morning, thank you for entrusting your preschooler to Dodge. Nature-based education doesn't stop at the preschool. It is at the core of everything that Dodge represents. Because of that, we're also dedicated to providing programs to individuals, families of all ages. Those programs often do take place at Dodge, but our naturalists also focus on outreach beyond the borders of the Nature Center, into the schools and across the Twin Cities. I spoke with one of our naturalists, Pam Volesevich, about how her role shifted this year in response to the changing needs of the community. Um, my name is Pam Wolesevich. I'm a naturalist here at Dodge Nature Center. Um, one of the long timers. I've been here more than 20 years now. How time flies. So in one of your roles, in multiple roles here at Dodge, but one of the roles is the E-STEM coordinator with Heritage Middle School. Mm -hmm. You spend typically every week going uh, into the classroom? Yep, almost every week. It's about a halftime position. So um, hopefully this well, in, in general, I'm there two and a half days a week. Perfect. And I see all 200 of their fifth grade students here in 197 uh, at that particular school. This last March, things changed. Um, that stopped. Well, how did that affect you and, and the partnership with Heritage? Uh, well, I talked to my liaison and we decided that I would make some videos. And we focused on the topics that we had sort of already been doing at the school. Each season, I focus on some sort of an animal topic. So we start in the spring with an insects and we discover bees and cockroaches and all kinds of exciting creatures of that sort. We move into uh, reptiles and amphibians in the later fall and then mammals is usually in the winter time and we had just started our unit on birds. 
Uh, we like to do birds in the spring because of course that's when they're visual, they're noisy, they're very, very relevant. And so we decided to start with a good old fashioned owl program. And I think it was well received by the students. Actually, the teachers told me that the, <laughs> the lessons that I was sending via video were the most interactive, less interactive lessons that the students were actually doing through school. So it was very exciting for me and I think it was fun for them. More than 2,200 people have logged into our YouTube site and, and watched some of your videos. Awesome. Over 13,000 have seen it through, through Facebook. How, how has that impacted kids as they're coping with this at home? Well, I think children really identify with animals. They love seeing them. Just look at any, the whole lineup on Saturday morning television. Um, it's all geared towards children with animals. And I think for me and my students, the nice thing was I was a familiar face as well. So in this trying time when kids were a little bit overwhelmed, a little bit stressed, parents were stressed, that to be able to tune in and see someone that they knew handling an animal, talking about things that they were interested in, hopefully gave some families peace of mind. Hopefully we snuck in a few learning points along the way as well. Pam, thank you for making the most of this situation for our students at Heritage and all our naturalists who go the extra mile in our outreach programs. In addition to outreach and caring for our animals, Pam also hosts a nature program called, uh, for adults called Women in the Woods. It always sells out. Dodge provides nature and farm learning experience for thousands of children and adults every year through field trips, after school programs, camps, and community events. If you're interested in programs like these, check out our website for upcoming outdoor, socially distanced programs for adults and kids. I hope you're taking note of the alphabet, alphabet art. Isn't Ashley awesome? And if you haven't mixed up that signature drink yet, now's the time to do it so you can raise a toast to the big news coming in a few minutes. Did you know Pam is married to Don, also known as Farmer Don? If you've ever had a chance to talk to Don, you know uh, how extremely educated he is on all topics. Traditional farming, organic gardening, bees, chickens, goats, pigs, you name it. I sat down with him to hear more about how the farm has been affected by the pandemic. My name's Don Oberdorfer. I'm the farm director at Dodge Nature Center and have been so for 22 years now. The farm, the farm has looked uh, quite different, uh, at least activity wise this spring. How has the shutdown with the pandemic affected the farm this, this last spring? It probably hasn't affected the farm a whole lot in what we have to do, but it has affected a lot in what we can do. And so uh, it's a little bit strange because with animals and plants and such things, you have to take care of them regardless of who comes. We also kind of held back on some of the animals and getting them out in the pasture. Um, as we put them out, and with the influx of people coming to Dodge, what has been the reaction of visitors coming to Dodge and seeing animals? Yeah, it's been a challenge. You know, it's both great to see folks coming out that aren't usually folks that use the space. And it's great to hit a new audience. It's great to be able to educate and, and reach those folks. We also have folks that feed the animals right next to the sign that says, don't feed the animals. But on the other hand, it, uh, you know, it's what we do. We're, we want to be here for the need and the needs change. And so sometimes the need is to talk about issues of society at hand, a broader thing like global warming. And sometimes it's to get people to burn off steam when they're quarantined in their house and they really need to go for a walk and get enrichment and do something different that's stimulating to just get outside, get moving and see and do. Sure. So we've talked a lot about what I'll call the West St. Paul farm area um, and what we've, we've done during the pandemic and what we, can, what we continue to do. We have kind of that blank, that blank slate out at Shepherd Farm and Cottage Grove. And uh, a big part of that is the farm area. What, what do you see happening out in the farm at, the, at Shepherd Farm? You know, the, uh, the silver lining on my side of, of the shutdown has been our opportunity to develop a lot of the plans that we had had in the works. And so over these last few months, we've built a new barn, uh, new pasture fences are going in. We've built bathrooms for school kids to come out. We've built a picnic pavilion. We've doubled the size of the community gardens at Shepherd. 
Uh, we've got bee keeping classes going over there as well as people who rent space to keep bees on their own. We're setting ourselves up so that when things start to roll, there's a whole new community out there that's going to have access to a place like this. And I'll double on that and say it's not just that they'll have access to a place like this. We're building something that's different. So folks here will have another place to go and folks there will be able to come here as well. And so this time has allowed us to really uh, delve deep into where we want to go with that space to build and implement a lot of those plans that we have uh, to work through a lot of the ideas that have sort of been rummaging around uh, rattling around the box for a bit and actually get to be put into practice. What a wealth of knowledge. We're extremely fortunate to have Don leading our farm department as well as a number of developments at Shepherd Farm. Environmental education at Dodge just doesn't stop. There's something for everyone. Preschoolers, kids, campers, adults, families, and seniors. And Dodge wouldn't be what it is without the dedication of the, and passion of our volunteers. On that note, I want to offer congratulations to Leslie Crona. She has been selected as our 2020 Shan Knox Volunteer of the Year. Leslie serves as one of our highly trained teacher naturalist volunteers. She knows nature. When school buses drop off kids for a field trip, she's ready to go. Thank you, Leslie, for your deep commitment to Dodge and especially the treats you brought pre-COVID into the lunchroom. And thank you to all of our volunteers. If you're watching from home tonight, know that you make a difference for Dodge every single day. You teach, you maintain the trails, you plant gardens, you care for our raptors and our farm animals. Thank you. In addition to volunteers, we also depend on our naturalist fellows. Every year, recent college graduates are invited to both learn and actually live on the property at Dodge for the year. They are the next generation of nature-based educators. And in our current class of fellows, as any indication, the future is bright for environmental education. Ashley Johnson has taken full advantage of these opportunities and has been a tremendous asset to Dodge, especially during these challenging times. My name is Ashley. I'm a naturalist fellow here at Dodge Nature Center. I work with children and various educational groups as well as developing naturalist skills. So as a naturalist fellow, one of the roles we ask of you is to keep a journal. Um, I see you've brought your journal today. What does that journal mean to you and has that helped lead to inspiration in, in art? Yeah, uh, the intention behind the nature journal is to engage your observation skills and pay attention more closely than you might if you were just looking to take something and then try to replicate it. it really does cause you to pay more attention than you might and notice things you might not otherwise. Um, in addition to be a naturalist fellow here at Dodge Nature Center, you have um, also you are also quite the artist. A number of your coloring sheets, Color It Wild, have been downloaded over nearly a thousand times. How does that make you feel? Yeah, I never expected it to be that successful. It was something I wanted to offer, didn't really have expectations, but that exceeded my um, any hopes I had for it, and it's, I'm very proud of that. I see one of your drawings that you're wearing today on your shirt. What, what gave you that inspiration? Um, it started as the cover of my naturalist notebook and has now been translated to uh, a Dodge Nature Center t-shirt. And when, you, when, when I think of Dodge Nature Center, I think of the storied history of Dodge and how we are impacting others. Um, you're really impacting um, people with not, not necessarily just nature education, but also art. Um, has to make you feel good. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a really close link between exploring nature and aesthetics. And I think um, nature-based art programs can be really useful and really engaging for some kids and adults. So um, it's, it's Dodge's goal to be very inclusive, um, welcoming people um, of all backgrounds to Dodge Nature Center. And we want to continue to be in inclusive. How has your role in, in this played a part in when you, when you think of art and, and the things that have gone on in the state of Minnesota and, and nationally, how have you played a role in that? I think art can be a great unifier. You know, with 
art, you don't have issues with language barriers, or hopefully it's something that feels accessible to anybody, anybody that could download it. You know, we've seen a rise in adults that enjoy coloring books for stress and um, anxiety. So even though we're kind of gearing these towards children, it's not inconceivable that adults could print them off and color them, and I hope that they feel accessible and fun for anybody to enjoy. What do you hope kids, families, adults get from your, your drawings? Without having children in school or on site here, it's been a challenge to find ways to be present in the community and engaging, and this is something I felt my skill set could contribute to keeping our presence alive in the community and offering resources for parents that might not be used to having their kids at home, something for children to do that could be both educational and fun and contributing to our new role in society. We hope you're enjoying the evening so far. We're so inspired by the ways that Dodge has stepped up in these moments and once again want to thank donors for your tremendous support. Your support allows Dodge the flexibility to create meaningful impact, even one that looks different than the traditional Dodge experience. Tonight you've seen the ways that Dodge continues to make a difference in the lives of children and adults. We also want to give you a chance to see how Dodge will be a leader in the future of environmental education. As mentioned earlier, we have some news to share with you. At this time, we will turn the evening back to Jason, where he will share the biggest announcement in Dodge Nature Center's history. Take it away, Jason! Cheers! Cheers. Cheers, Lit and Ann. Thank you for chairing this different event this year. Uh, all right, it's finally time. It's finally time for that big announcement. Dodge Nature Center 1967, Mrs. Dodge's vision and the growth of Dodge Nature Center has been amazing. To see the people walking the tra trails, children learning, our staff teaching, and you visiting and you supporting. It's about the people. When I think back of my time with Mrs. Dodge and out in her sunroom, she talked to me about this quote that I've used many times at Dodge Nature Center in the preschool. And she said to me, Jason, you could have the biggest, best building in the world, but all that matters is the people inside. And if you've learned anything from the videos that you just watched, it's about the people. It's about our staff, our volunteers, our donors, our board, all of you that visit Dodge Nature Center. Thank you to the donors and staff for making this announcement possible. For years, the Dodge tagline has been nourishing your need for nature. Tonight, I am excited to announce the largest campaign in the history of Dodge Nature Center and preschool, nourishing everyone's need for nature a $40 million comprehensive campaign.
Olivia Dodge always sought out the characteristics and interests and passions that other people had and she respected them and helped them to move forward and grow in their own path. Mrs. Dodge's legacy is extremely important to this organization and it's where we started and it's where we built from. She is still impacting people's lives by what we are doing today and will continue to impact those lives for many years to come. I think in Minnesota we're too good at keeping secrets and Dodge has been too well kept a secret for too long. This campaign is really critical to ensure the viability and sustainability of Dodge for the next 50 years and beyond. And one of my hopes is that as a result of this successful campaign, Dodge will not only increase its visibility, but it will increase its audience. It will increase its program offerings. It will increase, increase its range and its reach. I don't think we can think in terms of an ambitious goal. I think we have to think in terms of how much do we want to protect something that we believe in? Too many people are presented with too many barriers for meaningful access to the outdoors and connection to nature. And I think we have an opportunity now to really do good work in accessibility and equity in environmental and outdoor education. I think it just means what I believe in, which is that we all need to have time in a natural setting, to breathe deeply of clear air, to walk and have a vista of green and growing things, and to allow our minds to reach up and think as high our thoughts as we can manage. We're extremely excited about the Cottage Grove community. When you think back to Dodge Nature Center in 1967, this property was surrounded by farmland. And you look at it today, it sits in the middle of housing. But it's here, it's a resource. Cottage Grove is very similar when you fast forward to 2020. I think what Shepherd Farm really does for Dodge is it allows it to increase its footprint, increase its visibility, increase the audiences and the numbers served, really press into equitable opportunities for access to nature in the East Metro, replicate what Dodge is already doing best and most innovative in, in its field, but also be an incubator for opportunities that we have yet to discover. I'm excited to support this campaign because it's an opportunity to not only ensure the longevity of Dodge Nature Center and preschool, but support the expansion to Cottage Grove and an entirely new audience. Cy and I responded to the invitation to support this campaign and work for it because we sensed that the timing was right to build a foundation that would support the base for the future. Thank you for considering a gift and participation and support of this campaign, the largest campaign in the history of Dodge Nature Center and Preschool, and an opportunity to invest in not only what we're doing now, but ensure the legacy and longevity of Dodge Nature Center and Preschool for the future. Your support is so important to this. This will allow children to continue to come to Dodge Nature Center, to spend time on our trails, to climb Challenge Hill, to be connected with nature. We want to create experiences for adults as well. We want adults to come back that have sent their children here to be able to tell the same stories their children are telling them. Experience our programs, experience our trails. Your support is key in, in, in allowing that opportunity for Dodge to grow, not just here, but in this community and in classrooms and in schools. Whatever Dodge means to you, this is an opportunity to continue that innovative work and make sure that Dodge is in a position to succeed as we all go forward at a time when nourishing everyone's need for nature is more important than ever before. This historic moment is possible because of the legacy of Mrs. Dodge, our founder, and all of those that came before us who supported and grew this organization. 
and this historic moment is possible because of you. Thank you for being here tonight and for caring about Dodge, for valuing environmental education and the Nature Center in your neighborhood. You keep Dodge going and growing. So I know you will be so thrilled to hear that Dodge has already raised over $28 million in cash, pledges, and planned gifts towards our $40 million goal. A goal which we plan to reach over the course of the next few years. So we are over 70% to our goal already raised. Tonight, I can also share with you that the campaign has a tremendous lead gift from an anonymous donor couple which combines a planned gift with cash pledges. They are not only longtime generous supporters, but are also volunteers at Dodge. Their leadership and support is greatly appreciate, appreciated as we kick off this campaign. I am so happy to also announce that Cy and Vicki Ford have committed over $5 million to Dodge Nature Preschool Endowment. They've been there for the preschool since its start. You can see them when you come in and out of the building in the statues they're, they're youth statues. They're firm believers and boosters of early childhood environmental education. Thank you to the Fords for their legacy of leadership to Dodge. The campaign is just starting so strong. In addition to the gifts I just mentioned, I'm very grateful for 100% participation from our board of directors. A $500,000 commitment to the capital projects at Shepherd Farm from the Fred, Fred C. and Catherine B. Anderson Foundation. A $250,000 gift towards the expansion of programming from Michelle and Tom Schleyhuber, along with the Sloggy Family Foundation. Thank you all for your leadership. Tonight, you've seen how Dodge has adapted to the events of 2020. This is all possible thanks to the donors who support the annual fund, the daily operations of Dodge. The annual fund is also a crucial component of nourishing everyone's Need for Nature campaign. In fact, we hope to raise $2 million in annual fund throughout the years of the campaign. Annual fund gifts provide the most flexible support to Dodge and allows us to meet the needs of the community at all times, even under the most difficult circumstances. Because of how vital these funds are, our generous anonymous donor couple has also pledged $1 million as a challenge match for the annual fund. This means every new and increased gift to the annual fund throughout the campaign will be doubled dollar for dollar up to $1 million. We are so grateful to the donors that have already stepped up in big ways to make this campaign launch successful. And we are incredibly excited to be here tonight to invite all our donors, all of you, to continue raising funds toward that ultimate goal. In celebration of officially launching the public portion of this campaign, we have an opportunity to jumpstart our goal for the annual fund. Funds that will be put to work right away for environmental education, getting kids and adults outside and learning in nature. Our anonymous donor couple has agreed to double everything we raise tonight. Funds which will go toward our $40 million campaign goal. Whether you're new to Dodge or a longtime donor, your gift tonight will have twice the impact. Together, we can raise $125,000 tonight so that our generous anonymous donor couple can double it to $250,000 of annual fund impact. Let's get it started. Below the video, you'll see a donate button. Behind me, we'll display the progress towards the $125,000 goal. With your gift of any amount, you'll make that thermometer move. I encourage you to make your gift through our online platform below. But if you'd rather give or pledge over the phone, call our team in the studio. I will again say, you can, we encourage you to make your gift on the platform below. We have a limited number of phone 
call or phones here for you to call. So if you can make your gift, but obviously, we also, if you need to call, please call the phone number below. Reminder, if you're on your full screen, you're going to have to minimize it to be able to see that Donate Now button. I do love a good surprise, as everybody knows, so here's another one. In addition to all the gifts being doubled tonight, any donor who makes a gift of $25 or more will also receive this special edition Dodge Nature Center Preschool shirt with artwork from our naturalist fellow Ashley Johnson, who you met earlier in the show. It's free for you as a sign of our thanks. We have adult and kid sizes available because we know we have nature lovers of all ages watching us tonight. Normally, at a night for nature, we would announce a fund a need around a specific project. But because of the unique circumstances of 2020, the flexibility of our annual fund has become our greatest need and our greatest opportunity with the challenge match. As we get started, we're going to start the fund a need by asking for gifts of $15,000. But feel, feel free to make a gift at any size at any time by clicking donate on your device. It only takes a minute to make a gift, and, you don't, and don't forget, it will be doubled. My team will be, bring, be bringing your first name so I can give you a shout out for your support. We have um, a time for, every family and every company has been affected differently in this pandemic, but one thing that has stayed the same is you being able to go outside and be part of nature. We are excited to be with you tonight, but also encourage you to come to Dodge Nature Center and be a part of what we do. Wow, we just got our first gift in, and instead of 15, it's $25,000 from a Dodge board member. Thank you, thank you so very much for your support. Let's move down to the $10,000 level. And I'm gonna get out some notes for the $10,000 level. So important. This is a campaign to maintain. This is a campaign for terrain, forest, farm fields, prairies, ponds, wild green space, right in the middle of housing and business development. Thank you, $10,000 from Dodge Camp Parents. You guys are the best. This is a campaign to sustain the legacy of Mrs. Dodge of 50 years of innovative and creative ideas. $10,000 from Ann and Jim, thank you. Thank you so very much. $10,000 from Chad and Maggie. Thank you. Thank you. Can we move to the $5,000 level? Remember at Dodge, over 125 bird species here at Dodge. Open to the public 365 days a year, sun up to sundown. Phenomenal programs. Professional run preschool. Your time outside is so important. We have $5,000 gifts from Betty, $5,000 from Cy and Vicki. Thank you, thank you for your support this evening. Let's move down to the $2,500 level. Um, this campaign is to sustain, maintain terrain and gain. Wetlands, grasslands, working farms in the middle of the city. This is a campaign for camps. After those many months of distance learning and screen time, kids need to be outdoors all the more. Dodge Camp kids give fresh air, freedom, and fortitude. Have you unscrambled all those letters yet? Looks like we're on our last one. $2,500 from Sarah and Clint. $2,000 from Patty and Brian. $2,000 from JP and Melissa. Thank you, thank you for your support and supporting Dodge Nature Center. Let's move down to the $1,000 level. Uh, I wanna kinda, kinda tell you a little joke right now as you're, you're spending some time on our trails and I know uh, the mayor of, of West St. Paul, Dave Napier, is gonna enjoy this one a little bit, but if you're out on the trails with your children and, and you see a, a rabbit go by, you can say to them, do you know how to catch a unique rabbit? Unique up on it, that's how, uh, that's, that, that one you can use later. Um, maybe, you know what I was thinking, maybe 
right now as, as I think about this is maybe we should have had a name the chicken for Lit's house uh, as an auction item. Um, Lit, maybe next year you and Ann can think about that. We can name the chicken that, that's going to be coming to the house. Uh, Ann, keep working on him. $1,500 from Dave and Stephanie, $1,000 from Ginny and John, $1,000 from Steve and Faye, 1000 from Peter and Chris, 1000 from Stephen and Linda. Thank you. Thank you for your support this evening and all you're doing for Dodge. This is absolutely fantastic. We are going to move down to the $500 level now. Uh, this is a campaign for camps. After these many months of distance learning and screen time, kids need to be outdoors all the more. Dodge kids, again, give, give fresh air, freedom, and fortitude. Come hike and de-stress on the miles of our trails. Get some fresh air, stretch your legs, leave your screens behind. Come to an outdoor program this fall. Come paint with Ashley and Mary in the new virtual nature art series. $500 from Richard and Lois, $500 from John and Ruth, $500 from Greg and Ann, $500 from Carol, $500 from Val, $500 from Adam, $500 from Carrie, $500 from Elizabeth, $500 from Michael. Thank you. Thank you for supporting Dodge, our annual fund, and the operations that make Dodge so spectacular. The $250 level. We are excited for you to be here with us tonight and to be part of this virtual event, which again is different. We're typically in a, a room, and tonight we're in your rooms, we're in your living rooms, and we're excited to be there. At the $250 level, we, we have Rob and Amy, Donna for $250, Kathy for $250, thank you. We welcome all gifts of any size, and we greatly appreciate your interest in Dodge Nature Center and the preschool. The preschool, today, seeing the kids outside, on the trails, being safe, seeing their smiles, their laughter, is what it's all about at Dodge. When you visit us and you listen to the wind blow through the trees, listening to the roosters crowing, finding those birds in nature are absolutely fantastic opportunities. You, we hear the stories all the time of, I came to Dodge when I was a child. And what do I remember? I remember deep fried dandelions. What a story. If you haven't tried deep fried dandelions, make sure you check out our Rock the Barn event in May. Let's hope we're all gathering then and spending time together. Let's move to the $100 level. We are very excited um, for these gifts from Tom and Edith. Tony, $100 from James and Judy, $100 from Catherine, $100 from Madeline and John, $100 from Paul, Sheila for $100, Marcy $100, Randy and Ann $100. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Let's take a look at that thermometer and see where we're going. Holy moly. We are getting there, folks. We are within $3,000 of our goal. And... It's getting hot in here, if you know what I mean. This, this is the things that gets me going. Your commitments and your time at Dodge. If we could move to the $25 level, um, these gifts are just as important as any gift to Dodge Nature Center. This is our time. This is your time. This is the time to step up and say, you know what? I come to Dodge. I want to be a part of that organization. They are moving. They are growing. $25 from Cynthia, $25 from Lillian, $25 from John, $35 from William, $50 from Kathy and Fred, $50 from Bill and Kathy, $50 from Charlie. Uh, remember, any gift of $25 or more, you will get one of these t-shirts uh, to show and sh wear proudly. Again, we greatly appreciate gifts of any size, any gifts. $25 more dollars from Emily, Betsy, Megan $50, Sarah, uh, an anonymous $10,000 gift that just came in. Thank you. $1,000 from Tom and Flopsy. Thank you, Tom and Flopsy. We, I, I'm overwhelmed. Um, these nights overwhelm me. 
and it's because of you and what you do for Dodge. We are over. Now, now, now I'm speechless. There are so many gifts on this screen that they're giving me that I can't even thank you all as much as I would love to sit here and name every one of you because of the support, the annual support to keep Dodge moving forward, to continue to allow us to grow in new communities. That's what makes this special. That's what makes Dodge so special. And the people, the relationships you have with this staff, don't ever forget that because they remember you. It's so fun seeing our naturalists and our preschool teachers, seeing alumni students, whether they're preschool, elementary school kids coming back and those people remembering our campers. The best, the best stories come from that. Thank you so much for your generous gifts tonight. This is just the beginning. This is the public announcement. You are a part of this. Thank you donors that set the stage for this campaign. If you'd like to hear more about the campaign, because again, this is just the start, please reach out to me. Sanders at dodgenaturecenter.org. 651-455-4531. Let's get together safely. Zoom, a hike with mask on. Let's do this. In addition to the annual fund which you supported tonight, there are many ways to participate in this campaign. Gifts to capital projects, endowment gifts, and legacy gifts. Making sure Dodge is here for years to come. Thank you to our sponsors who gave us the tools to bring a Night for Nature direct to your living room. Morris Code, thank you for letting us be here tonight and be able to communicate to people in a way that they get to see this. To the staff of Dodge Nature, and Dodge Nature Center and Preschool, I salute you and thank you. We are so excited about this campaign and the funds raised tonight will be put to use right away. Your support is keeping Dodge responsive to the needs of our community. I invite you again for a tour of the property to hear more about the future of Dodge. I would love a calendar full of tours behind the seeds, through the farm, the prairie, you name it, I want to show you. We have staff that want to show you. If you haven't had a chance to make your gift, this link will stay active after the event ends. You can also visit dodgenaturecenter.org backslash campaign to view the campaign video and learn more ways to support this campaign. Thank you for being here tonight. Because of you, this campaign is off to an amazing start. You raised over $250,000 as that gets doubled. Even on a screen, me looking into this screen, into your living rooms, I can feel how much you care about Dodge. You inspire the work of every environmental educator at Dodge, and you definitely inspire me. Thank you for securing a bright and bold future for Dodge Nature Center and preschool. Thank you and good night. We do it? <laughs>